Hey there, it's Verlin. Today we'll be playing the new Archon quest for Natlan. So let's get right into it. I got Shilonin just a few minutes ago. So let's see how the how she works out, how she how she plays out, and how the quest goes. Oh. I see. Thank you so much. The Adventurous Guild has been overwhelmed these days. <laughs> no worries at all. We've always valued the strength of adventurers. Given the current situation, it's vital that we all work together. He looks pretty cool. Since we're facing the same enemies, I'll send you the intel we've collected on the Abyss so far. Then we can take a look at how to coordinate our efforts. All right. Thank you so much. Commissions? Ah, you two have come just in time. I've got some good news. The Pyro Archon has... Given how the Abyss has ramped up its activities lately, we can no longer afford to act only after receiving news of an invasion. So the Pyro Archon suggested that the Scions of a Canopy and the Adventurers Guild focus on collecting and disseminating intel. That way, we can stay informed of everything that's happening across the land. Once we receive word of enemy activity, we can notify the nearest camp and the stationed forces can take immediate action. Yes, precisely. This should also allow us to focus on gathering information rather than running around and trying to tackle everything at once. Yeah, that's a good so idea. Please also take a chance to relax, you two. You've been working hard these days, and this will be a good opportunity. So that's the plan! Whew, we can finally stop and take a break! Paimon knows that! just wanted to lay here and do nothing <laughs> <laughs> the movements of the abyss are always unpredictable there have also been times when it suddenly became more active in the past the people here generally see it as something like an acute natural disaster once the disaster is over everyone will return to their normal lives we just all hope that day oh right most people have no idea just how bad the situation has gotten in the night kingdom Katrina. <clears throat> oh, hey, Katrina. Oh, she's not better now? voiced. Huh? Did I read her notes? Her dialogue? Don't think I haven't heard about all the things you've been doing. With everything working so, everyone working so hard, I've got to do my part too. Oh, by the way, Shilani told me she ordered to forge you an ancient name. She said that she's all set and we can head over whatever we're ready. Wow! So we'll finally get to meet Shilani, the legendary forger of ancient names! I still can't believe anyone could forge those things. <laughs> Shilani is a true master. Not only can she forge ancient names, but also sort of new and fun things. She's always got a pile of commissions on her plate. So you usually have to wait a while before she finishes something. In this case, though, she's completely clear her, clear her schedule just to work with you. She wants to give your name her full attention. Well, I've already sing, signed up as a warrior, so all I have to do for now is wait for my assignment. If it's okay, maybe we can go to see Shiloni together. She wouldn't turn me away, right? I mean, I hope she wouldn't. Hey. That's true. Ah. Uh, on second thought, m maybe I'll just find a hole in the ground to jump into and hide for a while. Beyond the smoke and mirrors. Is that not the name of a song? Sounds familiar. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Oh, uh, where do we go now? So yeah, I was tracking this for farming. So where do we go now? Alright. Uh, 
I'm liking Shilonen so far. I still haven't used her that much for combat, but I was exploring and she's pretty good. Oh, talking about the queen herself. Oh, Shilonen, I brought the person who needs an ancient name. She's super amazing. I've already turned, learned tons of stuff from her. I can vouch that she's really worthy of a ah, hero's name. Yes, so I've heard. So young, and yet you've already got quite the reputation. Wait, are you, are you Outlanders? Oh, she didn't know that? Yep, we're travelers who just arrived in Matland not too long ago. No, I, I mean, I was aware that you're travelers. It's just no one told me that you're Outlanders. Mm. Huh, you're saying that Fire Archon didn't tell you? No, the only thing she said is that a new hero had pledged herself to the plan, but we need to forge an ancient name to ensure she'd be able to return safe and sound. And she did mention that it would be quite difficult to forge an ancient name for them, but at the time, I thought she was just commenting on my skills. But I seem to understand where the uh, true difficulty lies now. <sighs> Are you upset? No, I, I wouldn't go that far. I'm used to it, really. I just uh, need a moment to process things. The Pyro Archon's requests are always difficult to fulfill, and uh, we used to argue a lot. Honestly, it's uh, probably for the better that she didn't bring this up at the time. Anyway, I can't argue with her if she isn't here, and it'd be pointless to take my anger out on someone else. But yeah. oh, just because I understand her rationale doesn't make me any less upset. After all, she must have known that forging an ancient name for an outlander is an impossible task. It's impossible? As you probably know, an ancient name is a symbol of a hero's spirit and glory, which grows even richer and heavier as generations of successors inherit it. We forge ancient names by engraving the heroic deeds of an individual who will become the first hero of that particular name. Should I try like to see, to copy her book? Yeah, I saw countless feats recorded in the Adventures Handbook. It, it felt like they could do anything. But they were all performed yeah, that did not sound of Natland, correct? Similar at all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Then those deeds haven't been recorded by the Night Kingdom. To take it one step further, even if you had performed heroic deeds in that land, as an outlander, your actions still wouldn't have been recorded by our lands. Only memories and experiences that have been acknowledged by the Wild can be used as the basis for an ancient name. Even the greatest of craftsmen cannot create something out of thin air, you know. That's just how it is. Seems the Wyab don't want just anyone to get a name, huh? <laughs> Malika, of all people, should know better than anyone. Yet she still entrusted the task of forging the ancient name to me. Oh, Paimon gets it. Nobody's happy being asked to do the impossible. Why do I feel like this has happened before? I think last time Shalona just ended up running dozens of love on the hills nearby. Ugh, don't remind me. Let's just, uh, focus on how we can pull this off. How to achieve the impossible. Sorry, I know I don't sound like a China at all. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> You're already willing to accept the task? Well, what else can I do? What's happened is already done. And it's not like I can outright defy the order of my Archon. Hmm. If she gave me this order, then she believes the ancient name is an indispensable part of her plan and that I'll be able to find a way to make it happen. In other words... The order is an affirmation of my abilities. Oh, not only has she accepted the task, but now she's looking for silver linings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can find some special way to pull this off. We really can make it work, huh? Um, sure we can still go back and talk to the Pyro Archon, right? But he is getting the Wyab to somehow acknowledge the Traveler's existence and record her heroic deeds. We heard the voice of a Wyab when we were in the Night Kingdom before. We even had a whole conversation with her. Yeah. If we can talk to her again, maybe we can figure something out together. Well, every tribe has their own Wyab. How do we know if the one you met is indeed the best one for us to talk to? Isn't there like a precedent way up? Considering the unprecedented way up? nature of this situation, I have a feeling that the acknowledgement of one Wyab alone 
would probably not be enough. Oh, we went from collecting archons to collecting Y-ups <sighs> now. I don't know. That requires a level of knowledge that I do not possess. <laughs> we need to find a consultant who's an expert on all things Night Kingdom and Y-up. The first person who comes to mind is the Lolly at the Masters of the Nightwind. The one we call Granny Eats to Leave. Oh, Sitlani. Oh, we heard that name before. We used her spirit speaker stone to find Kachina's ancient name. Yeah. The person who can make something like that must be pretty impressive. I'm unsure she'd be able to help. Uh, still, she's older now and quite eccentric. It's hard to even book a meeting with her, given that she's constantly holed up in a room and doesn't like to be disturbed. I've heard that to get her help, you have to be extremely patient with her and know how to keep her spirit up. To break it to you, but huh? Why is that? Oh, yeah, we Didn't broke. Didn't she already help you before? We broke and that thing, right? Well, yeah, at the cost of her spirit speaker stone being split into two. Yeah. Huh? <sighs> Great going, Malika. We're already off to a rocky start here. Uh, in that case, I guess your only option is to try to emphasize that this is an important order from the Pyro Archon. Hopefully, Seat Lolly would still want to show respect to the Archon. That was uh, the line from the from the trailer. I'll also write you a letter on your behalf. If you can find someone to deliver it and mention some good things about you, then that should help too. Oh, let's. Ask Kimish to deliver the letter. He understands the whole situation and it's already a familiar face to her. I sure hope so. Hal won't interrupt when he's talking, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Kanich is a seasoned negotiator. I trust that he'll know the best things to say. Great, then. I'll go contact him right now. Uh, please just give me a moment to write the letter and we can meet up near the Statue of the Seven later. I could probably just walk there, but we got teleportation, so. Oh, he's not voice either? Uh, we meet again. Kachina told, <laughs> Kachina told me everything. I'll deliver the message to the Masters of the Nightwind and convince Hitlali to give you a chance. I'll also take this chance to explain what happened to the spirit speaker stone and offer her an apology in person. Oh, sorry to put this on you, Kanich. It's just that you're probably the only person who knows how to deal with her. It's all right. Well, we are we are all working for the sake of the Pyrocrine's plan, after all. Everyone here understands how dire the situation has become. Uh, wait, so Kachina and the Traveler also know about the plan? Because we all saw a hero of the past rematerialize right before our eyes. And then Molani said that a ton of knowledge and memory suddenly flooded her, her brain. The, py the Pyro Archon explained everything when we came back from the Night Kingdom, including the reason behind the appearance of the hero as well as the current state of the Night Kingdom. Right. She mentioned there are six heroes and that Shilonen is one of four that have already been acknowledged. Oh, <laughs> well, then I suppose there's no need to keep any secrets between us. Having yeah. companions walk by your side is perhaps the best solace when facing such a bleak reality. The power of friendship. I have another piece of internet to share. We have pretty much identified the person who rescued the captain in the status of the sacred flame. His name is Ororon. And he also hailed from the masters of the night wind. However, he spent most of his life living in the wilderness, wilderness by himself, away from the rest of the tribe. That's why his disappearance went unnoticed. By the time Sitlali finally realized that he was gone, no one had heard from him for quite a while. Uh, knows him too? That's right. Oron was an orphan raised by the chief of the Masters of the Nightwind and many other Kanhiro people in his tribe. Still, he had something of an odd reputation his whole life. Odd, huh? Given how the Masters of the Nightwind love to babble about dreams and revelations, they're already a pretty <laughs> strange bunch to most. I've never met Auroran, but if they consider him the odd one, he's got to be pretty far out there. Oh. 
that's right. So in that sense, Oronon and Slali actually have quite a bit in common, which is why they get along pretty well. Yeah. Makes sense. They're friends. I wondered how Lali could be the first one to notice Aurora's disappearance if she spends the whole day in her room. As of now, we still haven't been able to confirm whether Ororon joined the Fatui voluntarily or if he was coerced. Sitlali is probably eager to prove that Ororon has it hasn't betrayed his people. I plan to use this as leverage when I go talk with her. Oh, I so see. If I'm following, you mean we'll help her investigate Roron and the captain's whereabouts. It's a give and take situation. Just if you're all on board with the idea, then it becomes a mutually beneficial collaboration. Rather than just a one-sided request. Even though I don't think Ziklali is the kind of person to turn down an order from the Fire Archon, working together with us will help her focus and not get distracted by the whole Ordonon situation. Yeah. Well, so we kinda owe her one anyway to make up for breaking the steward speaker's down. Yeah, this is a pretty well thought out plan. As expected of Molly Poke and each. Then uh yeah, I'll leave my letter to you. Let's hope Seat Lolly can meet at the stadium in two days. Sure, I'll head out right away. Take care out there, Kinich. I'll be heading back as well. There are still a few things I need to pack. Okay, then let's part ways for now. I'll see you in a couple of days. Well, I tried to do their voices as well as I could. Wait until the morning of the day after tomorrow. Oh, it's time to meet up with Shilonen. Let's ask her how things have been going. We're meeting Shilonen with Shilonen. Hey Shilonen, how's everything going? Oh, hi Traveler and Paimon. I have uh, bad news. Oh. Seat Lolly did not reply to our request. Although, I suppose I'm not too surprised. We have to go there and knock on her door. You mean she didn't even bother to give Sweet a response? That's my she fate. Really does have quite the ego then. <laughs> she reminds me of Farsan. Yeah, well, she can be also quite eccentric, though she's one Good of the lolly, most I mean. people around. Even the masters of the night went off and struggled to work with her. My guess is that she probably has other reasons for not deigning us with a response. But let's go to the stadium and see if we can meet her there. If we do get a chance to talk to her in person, we can still try to work something out. Oh, so she's nearby. I thought she would be like... Hard to find, I guess. But doesn't seem to be the case. I forget when you can sprint. Huh. She's just not gonna show up, huh? <sighs> well, we tried to be as considerate as we could, but she's under no obligation to help. That might be true, but this is still a request from the Pyro Archon, right? Shouldn't the subject always answer the call of their Archon? <laughs> a subject? Well, <laughs> if, if you ask me, I'd say we're all more like friends with the Archon. Yes, Mawika is our leader. But that doesn't mean there's any kind of tall barrier between us and her. The only thing is that she often has very high expectations of us. Hmm. Yeah. So even though she's super powerful, it sounds like she's actually pretty down to earth and easy to get along with. Well, that's pretty much what these quests like have been up about, right? Silly, right? Does she oh. think she can ignore us just because she's seen us? You all talk about her like she's some kind of huge deal, but she didn't even bother to reply to our letter! Seriously, if she didn't want to come, she could at least let us know. If that's what Paimon? aging does to you, Paimon never wants to get old. <coughs> Paimon? Oh, really? So, that's how you see me? Huh? <laughs> Who's there? Who's talking next to Oh, don't mind me. I'm just a disgruntled old hag, right? Uh, come on, relax. I'm sure my bark's worse than my bite. Huh? See Lolly. Wait, you're Seed Lolly? You're Granny Eatsley? Yes, Granny Eatsley. But emphasis on Eatsley, not Granny. <laughs> oh, her clothes are so pretty. Uh, you must know this trope from light novels, surely. They use it all the time. 
the young man who's actually the oldest person in the room, the girl next door who turns out to be a seasoned veteran, the wise sage who looks like a little kid. Is that Paima foreshadowing? Oh, wipe that look off your face! You've seriously never seen an older lady that doesn't look her age? <sighs> okay, well, don't go thinking it's a trick either. See? I'm barely wearing any makeup. <laughs> Are you with me? Fausa. I forgot Fausa? to mention. She's called Granny, but uh, she's actually pretty young. <laughs> <laughs> it was an honest mistake. I guess we've just gotten used to it. Um, I'm on sorry. So, how old are you actually? You don't really go around asking people what? that, Paimon. How dare you! <laughs> don't you know it's rude to ask a lady her age? Do we not not know Fire Sunny can or something? Guys, but now she's putting more and more of her foot in her mouth. <laughs> really, Paima just got a little mad since we thought, well, you were gonna leave us out to dry. Oh. It was my idea to invite you here, Seat Lolly. So if you're upset, you can just take it out on me. <sighs> All right. I was only joking. I didn't mean to chastise anyone. There's really no need to take all this so seriously. If anything, I'm gonna feel awkward if we keep this going. I received Kanicha's letter and was planning to attend this meeting. Since I had already decided to come, I figured there was no need to draft a reply that simply said, Understood. Besides, just showing up is the most important part, no? I don't know if I agree to that logic, but, but alright. It's also natural for people to get held up by one thing or another as they're trying to leave the house. <laughs> it certainly was a bit awkward to see that everyone else had arrived <laughs> before me. At first, I was thinking of quietly sneaking over, but since you were already here waiting for me, I started to think about how I should phrase my apology, only to hear you all talking smack about me. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, that's the whole story. Uh, <clears throat> honestly, it's not like I owed you an explanation anyway. <laughs> huh? What's with that expression? Was she feeling embarrassed just now? When the masters of the night winds said they struggled dealing with her. Huh, I wonder if the feeling is mutual. Huh, she seems to be pretty awkward herself. Everything she <laughs> does and says seems a little forced. <laughs> Why are we judging her so bad? Ahem. Anyway, Shilonen, I heard that you require my help in crafting an ancient name. Correct. The situation isn't like anything we've handled before. Let me explain. Huh, I see. So Maoika has asked you to forge an ancient name for an outlander. Well, that would be a first. And you've also heard all about Auroron. I must say, he's always been a good kid. I can't see him joining the Fatui of his own volition. He must have been coerced somehow. Yeah, that's what we came here to ask you. We'll help bring Auroron back if you help us solve the problems of forging the ancient name. What do you think? Hmm. Uh, I suppose I'll just call you Traveler for now. Traveler, come here. Let me take a good look at you. Hmm. What does that mean? Hmm. Wealth leads to unending conflicts between people. Yet you alone transcend the value of gold. Baleful thunder and wrathful waves bring terror to mortal hearts. Yet, again and again, you've braved them to find new worlds. Find new worlds? A weary yet free soul. Even the most verdant leaf in the forest will pray for your happiness and safe passage. <sighs> Those are all the things that I could see in you. You've experienced far more than even most mortals could dream of. You possess the heart of a sincere hero 
along with the conviction to lift a torch above your head and walk headlong into the night. Huh? Don't move. There's something here. Huh? What thing? Don't scare Paimon. Is the trapper gonna be okay? Ah, uh, shoo! Ah, yep. uh, that should do it. You've just returned from the Night Kingdom, so some fragments of souls were still stuck to your body. No need to worry. I've just cleared out the last of them. <laughs> Isn't that kinda like having part of a ghost come back? Uh, it's nothing as serious as that. If left unattended, the most it could do is stir up some chaos in your mind, and generally worsen your mood. Well, in that case, better to get rid of them. It was nothing. Shilonen, let's follow your proposal. Once you've brought Aurora hmm. on back, I'll take you to see the Lord of the Night. The Lord of the Night? But don't we need to talk to the Wyab of the tribes? Something this important is beyond their jurisdiction. Only the Lord of the Night can decide whether we can grant an ancient name to one who does not hail from our lands. The Lord of the Night is an ancient entity that rules over the entire Night Kingdom, constantly borrowing the power of the Sacred Flame to combat corrosion from the Abyss. Oh, so you're basically saying it's even more powerful than the Wyab of the tribes. Well, that sort of makes sense, being the Lord of the entire Night Kingdom and all. Oh, so that's the... the... The precedent way of uh, I was exactly. talking about. It's not so much that one's more powerful than the other. Uh, but never mind. That's not important. It would take too much time to explain. Just listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. The Lord of the Night is currently in a deep slumber, and we can only communicate with its consciousness while in a trance. In hmm. other words, in a dream. But I will need to prepare a few more things if we are to hold a ceremony to achieve the state of the trance. I'll make a list. Can any of you get everything for me? I can go. It'll probably be a long list, so better leave it to- Sounds good! Then we'll go with Sweet Lolly to track down Aurora- Phew, the Fatui are nothing to scoff at, so please, be careful during your investigation. If- Yep, we'll be sure to play it safe. All right, now it's time for us to catch that brat and bring him back. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry I made you wait earlier. It was actually because I decided to swing by Auroran's place to look for clues. Hmm. If so she's opening now, lived alone, now that she knows. And I found a broken jar in his house. There was also something off about his phlogiston aphids, which I assume is because their keeper has been gone for quite some time. What are those? And interestingly enough, I saw some slash marks in the house that did not match any of our local weapons. My guess is they were left by Snezhnayan arms. It could also be a setup. Oh, sounds like the Just saying. House and took him hostage. Just but saying. Why would they kidnap a kid who just spends his days living in the country and raising aphids? He's only in his 20s. What would they want with him? I mean. <laughs> That's not to say that I believe he's totally innocent, of course. Since he's the only one who was kidnapped out of everyone in Natlan, he must have done something to attract their attention. <sighs> in any case, we'll get to the bottom of this once we manage to get him back here. I'm truly sorry to put you two through all this trouble with me. But uh, please help me get him back. You can count on us! All right, yeah. then let's start by heading to where Auroran was seen last. Hmm. All right, we gotta go to Auroran's house. Or well, to investigate some some clues. Oh, I still haven't changed it, changed the wind glider. I don't know which one I'll use. I guess the the symphony one. Oh yeah, you can sprint. Ah, uh, this is the spot. An eyewitness claimed to have seen Auroran speaking to some Fatui soldiers here. I don't know how much you're willing to believe me, 
But Auroron really is a good kid. I see no reason why he'd suddenly get involved with the Fatui. I'm convinced that what the witnesses saw was actually the Fatui coercing him. Or perhaps trying to extract information. Uh, however, I doubt anyone would believe me, given there are no signs of a fight. You think Kanich say that she's a big name in Natlan? Feels kinda weird to see her so frustrated and helpless like this. Auroron? Well, he was left at the side of the road as an infant. And the people of the tribe took him in. You could say that everyone had a hand in raising him. He learned a lot from us. And once he reached adulthood, he built himself a house out in the countryside. Ooh. He spends most of his days growing vegetables and raising aphids. Living off of what he harvests from the garden. What are aphids again? <sighs> He's always been such a good kid. He would even get his friends to deliver whole bags of fresh produce to my place. If that's all there is to him, then he really doesn't sound like a bad person. Oh well, let's keep looking. He can answer all of our questions once we find him. Yeah. He's been raising phlogiston aphids for a long time. And since they were disturbed, they secreted a special type of phlogiston. We can use that substance to track his movements. Let's follow the phlogiston trail. Huh? What trail? I'm a oh, right. I forgot your eyes don't naturally perceive such things. Your eye. Uh, here, give me your hand. Oh. Huh? How about now? What do you see? Whoa, Paimon can see it now too! That's right. I used a spell to temporarily transfer a portion of my senses to you. For a short while, you'll be able to see the phlogiston too. Wow, you can even share your senses with us? First time Paimon's heard anything like that. Yeah, so she's that pretty strong. It's a very rare spell that most people aren't adept at. But don't worry, it's a cinch for me. Between the two of you, it seems the traveler's senses are a bit stronger than Paimon's. <laughs> Her face. When I held your hand just now, I could sense that you've got a great affinity for phlogiston. You're extraordinarily gifted. Yeah, but why? Let's think about that. Anyway, why? we'll need to use our vision now to track down Auroron. Good luck, you two. Over here, this way! <laughs> See, Lolly might say a lot of deep and confusing stuff, but this spell of hers is really something! Uh, what was that? <laughs> uh, what does she mean by deep and confusing? As far as elderly shamans go, I'd say that I'm already pretty easy to talk to. Is there any other old hag who's as fluent in the language of the youth as me? Why the question uh, mark? But is my way of speaking still not trendy enough? I've already tried my best to match their speech patterns. But given the looks on their faces just now... He's just like me for real. Or He's just like me. I'm still not fashionable enough, but that can't be right. Ugh. Don't tell me they're still getting the impression <laughs> that I'm super old fashioned. Uh, huh? Are they are they reading their mind? Her mind? Oh, since she shared her Was like her powers. So, she, can she read minds? Uh, now that I think about it, it's a good thing I found some helpers this time. Some things are best done with the help of friends. <laughs> We're not gonna say anything. We can hear now her thoughts through telepathy. Whoa, this is amazing. Something like this could only happen with Splunny. Oh? They appear to be feeling quite confident. It looks like our work will go smoothly. <laughs> Give it. Just leave it to us. 
Oh, does she not re does she not realize we're talking to her or can she or she can't listen to us? By Paimon's experience as a guide, it definitely looks like people set up camp here. No way, Paimon. Uh, wait, the phlogist in here is a bit odd. Let me see. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Paimon sees a small shape here. Could it be some sort of symbol? This is a distress signal for the masters of the night oh. wind. Only someone from our tribe would recognize it. We've got to find him. Fast. Uh, leaving such a subtle mark implies that he was trying to be discreet. In other words, he was probably under the Fatui's watch. Uh, if they notice us, we can just charge in and fight them to the death. Oh! But... Uh, but what if my darling grandson is also there? I can't have him caught in the crossfire. Darling grandson, that's so cute. Uh, no. I've got to be careful, otherwise he'd get hit as well. Uh, how annoying. <sighs> no. <laughs> no, I've got to stay calm and keep my composure. Traces of people staying here too. Oh, uh, wait a second. The phlogiston around here is jumbled up. I can also smell a mix of elements in the air pyro, electro, and some other elements as well. You each told us that you were super amazing. No wonder you can sense so many more things than us. Huh. <laughs> it's about time that little brat said something <laughs> nice about me. Uh, there are signs of a struggle here. Judging from what's left on the scene, there must have been a fight. But after that, the factions seem to have gone their separate ways. Both the phlogiston and the elemental traces in the air support that. Do you still remember was... the little mark we hmm. found before? Paimon's thinking, what if Auroron wanted to leave another distress signal, but was caught by the Fatui? Indeed, judging by the distress signal from before, Ordono was being held by the Fatui. So given the difference in numbers, he probably wouldn't have been able to overpower them. And given there are two signals leading from here, we should split up as well. I'll take this direction, and leave the other one to you. Auroron! <sighs> what the heck were you doing? It's one thing to trouble me. But now I had to bring other people into this as well. <laughs> and off she goes. Traveler, did you hear all that as well? Once Seat Lolly left, that voice went away as well. Paimon even tried calling her name inside Paimon's head, but there was no response. Huh. So you were thinking the same thing. Paimon also thought that if we could hear what she was thinking, then she could probably also hear what we were thinking. She did say that she was quite adept at this spell. And it doesn't sound like she's had any trouble with it in the past. Huh, maybe we're a special case and can hear her thoughts as a side effect. Huh. <laughs> if you think about it, she's really got a lively inner world. It paints quite a different picture from Paimon's first impression of her. Okay, <laughs> we have to go here. There's that I thing over there. Traces here. See if we can find anything up ahead. Did you find something? So we can't tell where Aurora and might have gone. That's weird. The phlogiston trail suddenly stops. But it can't have just evaporated into thin air, right? A trap? 
You can hear the sounds of the wind from beneath the earth. Voice, what about just now? What? What is going on? Oh. Well, they're he. I'm very sorry, but please do not move. I have no desire to hurt you. Well, look who's threatening us now. Threatening. I apologize that our first meeting has to take place like this. It's just that you're much like one of those animals with ears that perk up as soon as it senses danger in their environment. And given your combat proficiency, I would not have been able to gain an advantage over you if you were anywhere else in the world. However, you're now in the Night Kingdom, a familiar domain to the masters of the Night Wing. Hello, Traveler. I'm Auroron, the one you've been searching for. Ah, the Fatui's custody. I see. So even Granny has told you that I was coerced by the Fatui. I'm afraid you've been brought here by a lie, like a false omen in the lingering smoke. Yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. My friend and I only left those traces to lure you here. Deceiving you is never our true intent, however. It was simply the fastest, oh, and most feasible there way for he us is. to set up a meeting. Greetings, traveler from afar. There he is. Be careful with this traveler. Her soul is temporarily restrained by us, and it appears to have become more fragile in the process. It's taking all my concentration to hold on to her. It was I who tasked Auroron with leaving the traces to lead you here. And I who use the master's ritual to bring your soul to the Night Kingdom. I've heard much about you from the past encounters you've had with my colleagues. Given the present situation in Natlan, I would like to sincerely request a formal meeting with you in person. Hmm. I will use the opportunity to explain my goals and motivations to you, as well as why I mistrust Malwika, the Pyro Archon. I believe there is little reason for you to blindly follow her plan. If you would like to hear our intel, then find us to the east of the stadium. But remember, not a word of this to anyone. I would like to avoid any further conflict. You will see me again once you return to reality. No matter what I say, please help me keep this a secret. This is all to avoid dragging Granny into this conflict. So they're wor they're working together. And yeah, that makes the most sense in my opinion. Hey, what happened just now? You suddenly collapsed and stuff. Was my soul forcefully removed from my body just now? That will explain why I couldn't hear five hey, at all. Why are you sitting on the ground? Are you okay? She Lolly! She froze for a moment. And then just collapsed to the ground! Could it have been those leftover remnants from the Night Kingdom? Do you have any itches or pain anywhere? Uh, don't worry. We can take a short break. Sorry, I know I asked for your help. But had I known you were feeling unwell, I wouldn't have taken you on this trip with me. If they were being truthful, then they must have risen over and motivation for what they did, but should I trust them? I could just share everything with Paimon and Sidlali right now, but that would mean giving up on the lead. I still haven't had much dealings with either the Fatui or the Masters of the Nightwind. I suppose I'll stay quiet for now and see if I can find it out anything else. If you're feeling sick, you should just say so. Sidlali should be able to, uh, exercise any ghosts or weird stuff that you picked up in the Night Kingdom. A seasoned traveler must know the importance of not pushing yourself beyond your limit. If you need anything from me, just 
say the word. In any case, let's take a bit more time to rest now. <sighs> Need to be more careful next time. Feeling better yet, Traveler? All right, let's get ready. I followed my phlogiston trail earlier to a stronghold guarded by soldiers. Oh, so it's close by. Then let's head over right away. Well, I recruited you to be my helper, which means we're in this together. Like the wind in the clouds. We either move as one or not at all. But if you want to make it up to me, then just be sure to fight extra hard when the time comes. I was going to say something earlier about the Traveler, but I completely forgot what it was. But it's along the lines of some... of a theory I have about them being like... the rulers of this world, if that makes sense. Look over there. Huh? Paimon thinks she sees someone in the middle of the camp. Uh, that's Auroron. So he really was taken by the Fatui. So that's Auroron. He really does look the same as when I spoke to him in the Night All Kingdom right, earlier. Doing? Daydreaming. Don't you have work to do? I cannot see the sun. Uh, what? Without the sun, I cannot see the truth. You are currently blocking the light, so I must beseech you to move aside. Huh? Okay, Mr. Philosopher. That's <laughs> enough mumbo jumbo. Wow. I'm going to rip that guy's head right off. See, Lamy's struggling to control her temper now. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go kick their butts. On my count. Three, two, one! Still trying to resist? You've got no idea who you're up against. Alright, is that- oh! Oh, there's more of them. Is that it? Yeah! <laughs> Furriness. <laughs> what is this act he's putting? She's called Granny Eats to Lead, but it's still kind of weird hearing someone actually call her Granny. And greetings to you, too, other Granny. <laughs> what? What did you just call her? <laughs> granny. Is that not right? You are Granny's friend, are you not? You seem to be approximately the same age as her, so I figured you're also a Granny. <laughs> Well, How finally, someone has her age. You? It doesn't work like that. There are a lot of people who look about the same age as me. You can't go around calling everyone Gramps or Granny. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's not a child, is he? Don't tell Paimon he's one of those people who look like an adult but are actually only eight or nine <laughs> years old. Oh, your words have pierced my heart like a thorn vine. Given how hard those thorns are to remove, I may just need to find a pair of What fingers. is with this guy? What what's with his Why are you so upset? You can just say yes or no. Of course I'm not a child. It's just Granny always taught me to show gratitude where it's due. And since the masters of the night wind raised me collectively, I basically see everyone above a certain age as an oh, elder I should look up to. The way he talks has definitely changed, but it doesn't feel like he's putting on an act. He asked me to do whatever I could to help keep Things a secret and even say it'll be for Sibali's sake. Exactly. Uh, but if you keep that up, then everyone's going to be your senior. Does he have like two personalities? Do you think saying all of this is gonna save you from a scolding, Auroron? 
taking like his eye? Haven't I told you a hundred times since you were a kid? Heed the three warnings. Be wary of beasts prowling around, scammers looking for their next victim, and strange people who appear out of nowhere. Oh, so you do remember, and you just chose to ignore them. I always knew that living on your own was going to get you into trouble sooner or later. But getting kidnapped? <laughs> that really takes the cake. <laughs> you won't always be able to rely on other people coming to your rescue, you know. You're just lucky we got here when we did, or we might be launching another search and rescue operation to find out where they put your severed head. I'm Whoa, sorry, Granny, I'll be more careful next time. Next time? <laughs> oh, oh, good one. You think there'll be a next time after this? Not a chance. Oh, this is very mm. realistic. Like when your parents are like scolding you. <sighs> they didn't hurt you, did they? No, they just asked me a lot of questions about Natlin's terrain and made me draw a map of the ley line distribution. Okay, now answer me honestly. Were you the one who helped the captain escape after his battle with the Pyro Archon? Yes. So why did you do it? Because... Because they said they would need my help from there on out. They also said that if I refused, they'd just come to you, Granny, and they'd already figured out a way to make you do their bidding. Hey, huh. I'm no ordinary granny. Would they really dare to come after me? And you? Did the gods give you a brain just for you to not use it? Oh. Did you really believe everything they said at face value and not stop to think? Oh, thankfully, the Pyro Archon only asked that we find the mysterious individual from the Masters of the Night Wind and didn't slap your name on a wanted poster. Don't think for a second that she doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. Even if the truth that you see will soon manifest into reality, there is still no need to preemptively panic. Have you forgotten the words that I've taught you? I don't know what that means, but... Ugh, forget it. We can submit the details of this camp and the defeated Fatui as evidence of your innocence. Let's clean this place up and get back to the city. Auroron? You better remember this lesson well, and seriously reflect on your actions. Also, once we return to the city, come to the speaker's chamber with me. I'll need you to explain everything. Sounds good. Should I bring some of my homegrown vegetables oh, as well? Oh, he's got... Your... vegetables? Yes. I grow a lot of fresh produce in my garden. I hope the Pyro Archon won't be too picky about the selection. <sighs> Now's not the time to be thinking about that. If you do come face to face with the Pyro Archon, the first thing you should do is... Recite the three warnings. Huh? Oh, no! You should emphasize that you were not in cahoots with the Fatui! <laughs> How exactly did the Masters raise this guy? Oh, right. I see. So Auroron came to the captain's rescue because he promised to help him in exchange for Seat Lolly's safety. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's right. I'm sorry. Now that you know Auroron was only trying to protect another member of his tribe, could I ask you to petition the Pyro Archon for her forgiveness? We'll give her a full report. We'll let you know once she's reached a decision. Yeah, it's not like this guy is part of Will some need to stay here? conspiracy or anything. Technically, yes. But if Miss Seat Lolly is willing to serve as your guarantor, then we can release you from custody. So he can uh, leave us. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. I don't have any more time to waste. Understood. Thank you very much. Mr. Auroron, please report back to the Speaker's chamber as soon as you've received notice of the Archon's decision. Oh, so this right, guy thank you. And helped thank you out granny. the Fatui and he just oh, he just free well, to go. You won't need to hide your face anymore. Traveler, Paimon, 
Thank you very much for your help. Once Auroran is settled, I'll go talk to Shilonen and get started on forging an ancient name for you. Oh, thank you! You scratch my back, I scratch yours. It's as good as done. You can just go twiddle your thumbs or something while you wait for the good news. Bye for now. Uh, come with me, Auroran. We've got to find you a place. Goodbye, other granny. This new grandson of mine is way too polite. <laughs> oh, they're he. The look on his face. He's probably trying to remind me about my promise. He doesn't strike me as a liar. Had I not seen everything for myself, I've never guessed that he could have done so much work behind Sigali's back. What does he really want? <laughs> Sorry, Paimon just didn't see that coming. So you really saw him in the Night Kingdom? And he didn't attack you? Oh, that Aurora, what is he up to? He sounded earnest enough just now. Paimon would have never guessed anything was happening. Yeah. All that stuff about protecting Seat Lolly and being forced to help the Fatui, when he's actually been a willing accomplice all along. Yeah, you're right. I mean, both things can be right. Well, he Paimon could be protecting, but about this. Paimon will support your choice no matter what. So if you want to go, we can go together. Oh. We still have another whole day before the meeting, so we'll just meet with them when the time comes. I mean, <clears throat> he could be working to protect her, but. He could, he could also agree with whatever they they are doing. Like, if he is part of the conspiracy, maybe they have like their own ideas behind what they're doing. Oh, I need to pick those things up. Please don't let this be a trap. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Good evening. Nice to see you again. The reaction. Oh, it's you. You shouldn't pop up from behind people like that. What are you? I'm terribly sorry. It's just a force of habit. Uh, and what's with you apologizing all the time? You sound so polite and honest, but you're actually doing shady stuff behind people's backs. <laughs> you're right. Granny tells me that too. Oh. Huh. Come to think of it, you remind me of her. Sometimes you two sound really similar, you know. Oh, so you're gonna call Paimon Granny too now? Well, I could. <laughs> hmm. Where's the captain? We're here for him. It's all clear. Over to you. Excellent. Yes! The fact that you showed up proves that I was right about your character. Yet, there's been a lot of talk about you. Oh, a child? A child told me that you're passionate about the unknown and willing to take risks. Rather than facing you as an enemy, I would much prefer to bring you to my side. If we allow the current state of things to continue, we will inevitably clash. And that's a scenario that I'd very much like to avoid. Oh. I've long heard of your exploits across the nations. Though you have crossed swords with my colleagues many times, I know that you are by no means an unreasonable person. Yeah. And once you've learned the truth that the Pyro Archon Malwika would never willingly share with you, you may just find it in your heart to consider my proposal. All right. Give it to us. Tell us a straight. I assume what is you've it? already been informed of the Pyro Archon's plan. In order to defeat the Abyss and save Natland, she still needs two more heroes to appear. Wait, how did you know that? Uh, never mind. Well, he it's now. probably one of them. I've long kept a close eye on her plan. 
To be frank, it's an exceedingly risky plan. Will the heroes really appear? And even if they come to her, will their power be enough to drive the Abyss back? If any part of the plan goes awry, all of Natlan, even all of Tabat, will pay for her mistakes. Now, you may have been led to believe that this is the only plan available to her. But what if I told you she's had another emergency plan all along? The details of which she has chosen to keep hidden from you. An emergency plan? Yes. A way to keep Natlan intact, even if her original plan fails. But given the painful cost of its execution, she has chosen to keep it as a mere backup plan. Whether this stems from hesitation, fear, or even naivete, I cannot say. But Natlan cannot afford to wait until she comes to her senses. Oh, but why do you My say? fear is that given the enormity of the decision, she will be reluctant to confront the dire reality we face until it is too late. There will be no time left to execute the backup plan. And all of Natlan will be lost to the abyss. But which is the plan? This is sounding pretty... We have to make the decision for her. Here and now. Yeah, that's just your speculation. You have to give us a plan, not this kind of manipulative yeah, monologue. You have any evidence for all this? Just telling us a bunch of scary stuff isn't enough, you know? Yeah. Besides, wasn't it you who tried to seize the Gnosis for the Tsaritsa's plan? The Gnosis has something to do with the this backup plan. I knew you'd be clever enough to see. That's right. I did not seek the Gnosis for the Tsaritsa. Since I was defeated in battle, I must put to rest my thoughts about the Gnosis. But even so, my desire to save Natlan remains unchanged. And now, I have found a new way to solve the crisis. We can implement it immediately if we reach an agreement. Is it about, like, our powers or something? <clears throat> oh, who's there? Someone's here. Huh? The captain disappeared! Something is rapidly approaching. Oh, no. Something! Bad news, chump! It's your granny! Oh! Hold on! I know what's happening. I think I know what's happening here. Pause. So, she can actually read our thoughts. And she was pretending not to. She sh so she could know about us. So that's how she's there. Right? See, Lolly, when did you get here? <sighs> I knew something was amiss after we were separated. Hidden ceremonial tools, an unconscious traveler. I must say, I'm very curious about what you're up to. How dare you go behind our backs like this, Auroron? Colluding or with the Fatui? maybe not. Real uh. Oh, here we go again. Cat got your tongue, huh? You really think you can avoid a scolding just by sta- I'm not trying to avoid anything. Oh, and now you're talking back. Well, go on then. Explain yourself. What the heck are you up to? I'm sorry, Granny. I feel so guilty. Oh, come on. Uh, you. That's it. Where are my tools? I swear, if I don't teach you a lesson right here and now, I'll... Uh, wait, Tifali! Please, calm down. We, uh, still learned a lot of info, didn't we? Like the fact that the captain isn't trying to seize the Gnosis anymore. So, maybe just save the scolding for later, okay? Uh, listen well, Auroron. You're only getting out of this now because of the Traveler's plea. This isn't over, you hear me? Uh, you're right, Traveler. Let's go. We can discuss this more back in the city. You two. Maybe my theory just wasn't real. Our conversation with the captain was interrupted at the most crucial moment, but if Oron's still here, maybe we can still learn the rest from him. Hmm. In all my years, I've never had a child cause me so much grief. Do you seriously not see what's at stake here? You've got a head on your shoulders, Auroron. Use it! 
Why did you help the captain? And I want the truth this time. Um. <laughs> no answer? Think you're being smart? <sighs> then let me ask a different question. What does the captain want? What is his purpose in Natlan? Uh. <sighs> really? You're just going to stonewall me? Uh. What? What? What even is up with this guy? Looks like Oron has no intention of answering uh, just her. Use your brain for a second. What do you possibly stand to gain by helping the captain? Only endless trouble awaits you and everyone in the tribe. You've always been a good kid. Why would you throw that all away now? If you're worried about something, just talk to me. Granny would much rather we had a conversation instead of constantly clashing like this. Um. Oh. I. Why is he? St I'm sorry that you have to hear all this. Indeed. It's like going to visit a friend at his house, only to suddenly hear your friend berating a naughty Saurian. Well, that's oh. an oddly specific analogy. Wait, did one of your friends really do that? Yes. <laughs> and every time my friend scolded his Saurians, they would look at me the same way you're looking at me now. Helpless and embarrassed. Wait, but you're the one getting your head chewed off. Stop making this about us! Yeah. Uh, indeed, you've got a point. Then please just hang it. Oh? You dare gossip between yourselves instead of listening to- Uh, sorry, sorry, Granny. <sighs> sorry, Granny. <laughs> sorry, Granny. You know what? Fine. I'm perfectly aware that everything I say goes in one ear and out the other. You're all grown up now. So why would you listen to an old hag like me? You say all the right things, but then you go and completely ignore me. Well- if that's how you're going to treat me, you can stop sending Aoife over to my place to deliver your stupid vegetables! I don't need anything from you! Oh my god, I feel scolded. The voice um, actor really went off. Who's Aoife? The delivery person? Uh, that's irrelevant. The point is, he hangs out with this kid, so he must be no good. Uh, you kids get to a certain age and suddenly act like you know it all. There's nothing I can say to get through to you. Auroron? If you're still thinking about that so-called duty, then please, just forget about it. The ley lines did not fall to this state because of you. And we've long closed the book on that incident. Uh, seems they've started talking about some kind of tribal history. That's not it, Granny. Well, there's something about, off about that boy. I know you tend to get down on yourself when you're upset, but I can tell I really hurt you this time. All I can say is I'm sorry. What's all going on with this guy? Auroron! Where have you gone? Oh. It sounds like he's somewhere super far away, but isn't he right here in front of us? I'm really sorry. It's up to all of us to do everything we can to save Natlan. So I've got to go. Get back here this instant! Auroron! Ugh, what is this? Powder from plant spores? Is that the trick he used? What just happened? How was he able to suddenly <laughs> get so far away like that? Oh, it's a trick of his. If you grind spores into a powder and spray it in the air, it can be manipulated to create an illusion. He pulled it off flawlessly. He must have put a lot of time into perfecting it. Don't tell me that's how he's been hunting in the fields these days. Oh, couldn't he have picked up something more useful? Ugh, little brat. That's it. The next time we meet, I'm definitely going to break his legs. Oh. Whoa, that's a little <laughs> extreme. <laughs> but still, why does he feel like he needs to run from us? If his goal is also to protect Natlan, then can't we work together? Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting your conversation with them earlier. But even if you'd been able to hear them out, there's no guarantee you would have gained anything substantial. Oh, but info is still info. Auroron probably did everything he could to get away because he knew I'd get the truth out of him sooner or later. Oh, that brat. I swear. The captain probably had some sort of substantial plan, otherwise Auroron would have no reason to keep following him. Mitten again is out of the cards for now, so it might be faster to just approach the fire and confirm what the captain said. And also, I can tell that Auroron's stubbornness got sort of deeply. 
need to find out a way to comfort her. Uh, uh, we've got quite a long walk back to the city. Let's take our time. It'll give me a moment to figure... This area is so pretty actually. Like the design. Ooh. Do you two have some time? Feeling hungry? How about we get something to eat? Alright, it's been a while since we last ate. Now that we can relax, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. Ah, uh, then let's go. We can find somewhere to sit down and talk. Food and drinks are on me. You're not going to take <laughs> off her? Ah, that's right. See, Lolly has gotten a lot quieter since Aurora ran away. She seems to be having a hard time. Uh, she's right. We're seasoned adventurers, so we're more than capable of paying our own bills. Hey, come on now. You won't even let me take you out for some food and drinks? <sighs> I just wanted to treat you to a meal. Uh, are you sure? We can save you some more. Uh, Mora is the least of my concerns. Besides, we're definitely due a meal after all the time we've spent together. Let me get this one. I might be an old hag, but I like to think I'm not completely useless. Sure, that's fine with us. But Paimon doesn't want you to be sad, Siwa. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure a juicy grilled steak will work wonders. Yeah, I feel like... She's like the type of person that will feel bad if you don't take her invitation. Like, that's something I've seen in real life too. The music is so good. Huh? What are you looking at? Uh, do you see two people standing by the door? They look like spitting images of each other. Are they twins? Oh, she's drunk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Paimon only sees one person there. Huh? Uh, how could that be? Huh? I guess my mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. Give me another bottle, boss! No! Do you think she's drunk? Do you think so, Paimon? There you go, then. <laughs> oh, my! Thought every day you get to see Granny Itsley here with some friends. Not to mention ones who've made a huge name for themselves recently. Oh, so you've heard of us? <laughs> of course I have! Aren't you the ones who saved Katrina and brought her back? No wonder you hit it off with Granny Sweet Lolly. She wouldn't spend time with just anybody, you know. <sighs> I don't even remember the last time I saw her with a new friend. Wait, so you call her Granny Cute? Well, given our ages, it'd probably be more accurate for me to call her my great-great-granny. <laughs> She's one of the most famous people at the Masters of the Nightwind. Huh? Gossiping about me right in front of my face now, are you, Chanka? <laughs> Please, Granny, I wouldn't dare. I'm just beyond happy to see you bring over some new friends. After all, any friends of our regulars are sure to be great customers, too. All right, that's enough. Go on now. I'm sure the other customers would like to talk to you as well. There's no need to keep staring at me. I promise I'll keep my alcohol down until I leave. <laughs> well then, you have my thanks. See Lolly? See Lolly? Who's that? Uh, you got 
some gall calling me by my first name. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, let me guess. You want to test your skills against Granny Eastly, don't ya? <laughs> You chumps come around here, picking fights with me? Well, you know what happens next. You lose, and then run off home to tell everyone about how I'm this big scary bully. It's always the same story. You breath start it, I finish it, and then I end up with the reputation of being some kind of terrible monster among the shamans. I mean, come on, monster, me, really? What did I do to deserve that? Is, is it okay for her to to be like this? Exactly. And while we're at it, I'm not some lazy slacker either. Between meditation, advising the chief, and speaking with the wyab. <laughs> I actually have a pretty packed schedule, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, and I have to mentor all the new kids. Hey, new <laughs> kid. Yeah, you. <laughs> uh, don't play dumb. Didn't I teach you how to find Flo Justin? You see, I know my stuff. I'm a good. Oh, that's more like it. About dang time someone showed me a little respect. Yeah, Granny's a hard worker, all right. You can always rely on old Granny. <laughs> Did she just fall asleep with her eyes open? Oh, jeez. Behind this pitch black curtain, a chapter of hatred reveals itself. Behind the smoke, the lingering smoke. Oh. Ah, she's meditating again. She does this whenever she's had a few too many dreams. Her mind's actually racing at this point. It's quite the opposite of sleep. Is this another specialty of the Masters of the Nightwing? <laughs> no, I'd say it's an ability that's unique to Sitlali herself. While she can easily pick up everyone else's skills and tricks, few have been able to master hers. Warning, warning. Red. Red, the color of danger. Has now arisen within that pair of eyes. Huh? What? A uh, traveler? Paimon? I. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I'm gonna hurl. Oh. Uh, hang on, just keep it in. Uh, uh, what? Shoot. Okay, it's passed. Uh, that was a. Close one. You had Paimon worried. Paimon really thought you were about to barf all over the table just now. Ugh, how embarrassing. I'm sorry you had to see me like that. That's never happened before, I swear. I've never... <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Wanna take a quick walk and get some fresh air? Chanka looks so worried just now. <laughs> Uh, there's so much that I want to say, but... Why not? Of course you can. Just say whatever's on your mind. Oh, please, Paimon. It's not as simple as you think. We've only known each other for a few days, right? What would you think of me if I were to start dumping all of my complaints on you after we've only just met? I mean, you, you did that just uh, now, and it was fine. It. That we wouldn't think less of you no matter what you're about to say. Uh, no, that wasn't my point at all. Seriously, don't you youngsters know anything about shame? I'm talking about shame. I've lived all these years and still can't get rid of it. Surely you know the feeling too? Um, actually? Huh? Tell me what? Oh. Yeah, this is a... Oh. Uh, the 
this is so... Y you heard... You heard my... It's okay, Sweet Lolly. You had every right to complain about those things. I can't take it anymore! Why do these things happen to me? <sighs> hearing me mumble under my breath is one thing, but hearing what I mumble in my own head? That's too much. It's just like when you're rolling on the floor in your pajamas, but you forget to lock the door, and someone bursts in to deliver cabbages and sees the whole thing. <laughs> so that, uh, happens to you a lot. It happens to people in general, okay? Doesn't matter if you're 200 years old or a thousand years old. Everyone rolls around in their pajamas sometimes. I was just picking something generic. <sighs> Take a walk with me. I have things to share with you. Looks like she's completely given up. But those criminals <laughs> must confess everything and accept their fate. Oh, oh well, great view, right? I love coming here by myself. Wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> You're making me want to cry. Oh, no. I was an expression, okay? A figure of speech. I'm just... Uh, embarrassed. Here you are thanking me. Even after you helped me all this time. Let's just have a casual conversation. It's easiest that way. Really? You don't seem like the kind... Well, I guess I used to be more of a stickler for the rules. And you're right. I... Don't usually open up to the people of my tribe like this. It's the troller effect. I'm just an eccentric old hag to them. That story's been passed down so long. It might as well be true. But you're just a regular person. <laughs> uh, the kids of my tribe would have a heart attack if they heard you say that. Well, you are powerful. Are they afraid of you? Uh, some are. Others are mad I always come out on top. A few decades like that, and people stop knowing how to deal with you. What about you? Are you scared of me? I mean, the Traveler has, um, has quite a lot of stuff, so I don't think so. Huh. That's because you're not from my tribe. You don't know how many delusions of grandeur I've destroyed just by existing. I make people realize that... No matter how hard they work, they'll never become a living legend like me. Oh, uh, not to brag or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's hard to believe. Just... Just pretend I never said anything. We believe you. Shilonen has full faith in your abilities, and Auroran didn't seem scared of you. Maybe it took you a... Yes, but Auroran's a special case. Maoika already told you about her plan. And you've given so much help to Auroran and me. You deserve to learn the full truth. Auroran's not like other people. As I mentioned, he was abandoned as a child. The reason being, his soul is incomplete. The masters of the Nightwind view this as a bad omen, capable of bringing about illness and misfortune. No one knows who his parents were. He was just left on a rock in the wilderness. It's a miracle he wasn't devoured by some wild beast. The Masters of the Nightwind believe they can see human souls. And in Auroran's incomplete soul, they saw a possibility for Natlan. A possibility to turn Auroran into a vessel for lost souls. The ceremony would allow lost souls to gather within him, 
Auroron would then be sent to the Night Kingdom to return the souls to their rightful place, strengthening the ley lines and completing the ceremony. Hey, please, that doesn't sound right. Now you see the problem. When damage occurs to the Night Kingdom, the souls held within disperse and remain adrift, unable to find a way back to the ley lines. This loss of souls damages the Night Kingdom even further. The ceremony can send back countless souls at once, which would benefit the Night Kingdom and the souls themselves. Of course, the vessel, Auroron, would be sacrificed in the process. I wasn't surprised the Chief at the time came up with the plan. The ley lines were already in a terrible state. A suitable candidate for the ceremony appears? And now you have the chance to make things better. Of course you're going to take it. When the Chief asked for my opinion, I didn't give my approval, but I didn't object either. So, they went ahead with the ceremony. It failed. And Auroron escaped with his life. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? By not objecting, I basically gave them the go-ahead. Maybe they didn't have my explicit approval, but it's not like I did the right thing. If the ceremony was successful, Auroron would probably be dead. Of course, in my tribe, death is rarely something to fear. But what kind of message would we be sending by sentencing a newborn to death? By using a human life as a tool? It's not right. So, when I learned the ceremony had failed, I was ashamed by my inaction and absolutely relieved by the result. The plan was never a secret. Or, I guess I should say, there was no point to keeping it a secret. A simple investigation from Auroron would reveal everything. Everyone thought he would be happy he survived. And he never really said anything to the contrary. But, just as I was about to put all of it behind me, he asks this question. Would Natlan have been saved if the ceremony succeeded? Wait, but it's not his fault. He knows that, but he still feels guilty. Auroron has a strong ability to perceive souls, more than any of us. He under- Maybe he chose to work with the Fatui because he still thinks he owes a debt to Natlan. Traveler. Didn't the captain say he'd found a way to solve the crisis? Maybe that's what brought Auroron into this. Anyway, mm. we can't just let things go on like this. We have to convince him to come back. I... Uh, you don't look so good, Duali. Me? Uh, probably drank too much. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, the fresh air is doing me good. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, forget that. I need to go home. <laughs> I hit it a little too hard. Uh, you've helped me so much already. How do I even begin to thank you? Hey, we're friends, aren't we? Besides, you already said you owe us a favor, so you don't need to worry about us. Uh, good point. Well, I'll go home and get some sleep. We can figure out our next move in the morning. Friends. <laughs> I like the sound of that. And we got a new friend. Auroran's probably back with the captain, don't you think? I mean, about the backup plan. Do you really believe what the captain told us? <laughs> yeah, you're right. We but she's probably asleep. We can find... Well, I think this is it for this episode. I will be uploading the next part. Bye. <laughs> oh yeah, and thanks for watching.